Hello everyone, welcome to BMN 603 Buddhist Practitioner 1 course during the summer 2020 at the International University at the East. My name is Venerable Sumitha, I am the instructor of this course. And as per the course today, we are going to talk about public speaking and delivery of different types of sermons as part of our week 8 lesson. My name is Venerable Sumitha and I am the instructor of your course. So we do have few weeks left from today onward. We have eight, week 8 and then with the quick recap of week 7 and the spiritual journal we can start today and also week 8 public speaking and the delivery of different types of sermons and in week 9 we do have public instructions or sermons at Buddhist ceremonial practices and week 10 we have the final review and final presentation Okay, so these two weeks again are interrelated. We will discuss about uh, public speaking and delivery of uh, different types of sermons. Um, Midterm uh, presentation, you did uh, wonderfully well and some of you still wanting to get in touch with me and please get back to me if you get this uh, message as soon as possible. Uh, if you haven't uploaded your PowerPoint to the Google Drive and just let me know and make sure everything is there and there is also if you go to the Google Drive folder there is also a uh, cheat sheet that you have to uh, check yourself okay so make sure all the requirements are complete before the end of the course and then we will finalize and send the gradings to the school right away. Spiritual journey, uh, journal update. I hope uh, you also practice meditation and also write your, record your experience in the spiritual journal. And it's great to see the improvement of your practice. And I continue to see the students working on their spiritual journal and the other students for the other students i would say please work on that and this is the key to your success of this course and the final presentation will also reflect your spiritual journal it should be much more detailed than the previous one so I want you to work on your spiritual journal and also try to relate those content to those contents to some academic articles, academic journals, academic uh, works, whichever you can, you can find that will be very nice. Uh, your academic uh, writing will be very effective and also reliable in that way. So today we are going to discuss about public speaking and the delivery of different types of sermons. And as I mentioned again, week 8 and week 9 will be interrelated. So that will be about how to give a speech and how the Dhamma talks are given in the Buddhist tradition some of those things you can learn today. And uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi is a very famous uh, world-class scholar and uh, he has uh, given a Dhamma talk on Art of Dhamma talk in our university at the University of the West, uh, another university that I work on. So, here, Bhikkhu Bodhi is giving a wonderful talk on uh, how one can organize and streamline uh, his or her Dhamma talk. 
Okay, and yeah, this happened in 2014. Yeah, this is uh, doc, uh, Dr. Vikha Bodhi teaching in the University of the West. And this is another sample Dhamma talk that I have given some years ago actually. Um, here, uh, what we do also is a traditional setup. You can... Okay, so I don't want to show the whole thing, play the whole thing for you. Uh, you can have a look and I give a, a Dhamma sermon there. And uh, so in a traditional Buddhist uh, Dhamma sermons, actually the traditional structure is like this. The monk is very respectfully invited. Okay. And in traditional Buddhist countries, actually, they go to the monk and they use some uh, beetles and they give some uh, offerings or something. And they very respectfully bow to the monk and invite, invite for a Dhamma talk um, according to his schedule. And when the monk comes to the, the temple or the house, wherever the venue is, and he will be escorted uh, very respectfully, again, with people keeping their palms together and chanting uh, out of respect for the, the monk. And then they will also uh, observe the five precepts as the monk is uh, going to start his Dhamma sermon after administering five precepts. And then inviting the heavenly beings is also a tradition. Inviting the heavenly beings and everyone in the all those spiritual beings to come and listen to the Dhamma. And then salutation to the Buddha will take place very shortly. And after that, a quote from the Buddhist canon, plus benefits of listening to Dhamma, and explaining the background of the background story of the quote. And after that, these eloquent speeches by the by the monks, they kind of mesmerize the crowd. They very skillfully bring the message, send the message to the, the audience. And eventually there'll be Q and A. It's not, um, it's optional in traditional uh, Buddhist uh, Dhamma sermons. Sometimes it happens, sometimes not necessarily, uh, but uh, uh, it's very comfortable also, for example, if people ask questions, um, because they can clear some of the doubts and those monks are well qualified and well trained, very knowledgeable about the Dhamma. So it's very useful if someone can ask questions. And transferring merits to the heavenly beings, departed ones and all sentient beings will take place later, uh, followed by a blessing, short blessing and then the Dhamma talk will uh, be over. Normally, traditionally, 
these Dhamma talks take place around one hour, but there are some, uh, in some cases, like two hours, and sometimes also it can be the whole night. Some uh, traditional Dhamma sermons happen all night, from night to the morning. So there are people listening to those Dhamma talks. And very interesting stories are also there regarding uh, this phenomenon. And in traditional Buddhist uh, countries, uh, the monks are invited to give a Dhamma talk on funeral uh, related, like after the funeral, seven days after the funeral, a monk will be invited to the, to the house. And normally it takes place in the evening. And then again, uh, the monks will be invited to the, to the house uh, for, for a dana meal lunch dana or breakfast dana and after that during after the dana and before the dana so there will be a short discourse after the uh, the lunch dana and even before the the lunch dana a monk will give a dhamma dhamma talk on the benefits and of the dhamma uh, of the dana and also how to give a dana so these are some of the topics and how to prepare oneself when giving a, a dana. Those things will be discussed in the uh, Dhamma talk uh, prior to and after the dana. And then the funeral, for example, uh, during the funeral service, there will be a short uh, Dhamma sermon as well about the, the death and the impermanence and the uh, things that are subject to change. So that is also a part of uh, the tradition. And apart from that, uh, there can be special occasions like three months after the, after somebody's passing away annually, uh, then the Dhamma talks are held. And then every full moon day, Dhamma talks are held. And apart from that, if there is any other special event or maybe, let's say, schools are inviting the monks to give Dhamma talks for the kids. So that also is, uh, depends on different occasions. And uh, sometimes when there is a special event, uh, ceremony or function, then again the monks will be invited. So many things like that happen. Uh, different variety of Dhamma talks happen uh, during the in the, the traditional Buddhist countries. Apart from these traditional Dhamma talks, there are also some Dhamma talks, what we call poetic Dhamma talks. So some monks are trained to give impromptu poems or they are prepared before. So they also explain some Buddhist stories like Jataka stories or Dhammapada stories, all in poetry. So poetical version of a Dhamma talk is a recent phenomenon. And uh, before that, uh, still there were Dhamma talks everywhere. So the monks who are uh, used to give Dhamma talks are very knowledgeable and they normally ask uh, answer all the questions of the audience and they are also very respectable monks in the community and when there is a, let's say a paritta chanting or protective chanting event happens and that time also the monks give a short uh, dhamma talk and every function uh, every chanting every um, meritorious activity, even housewarming ceremony or business opening or launching of any business. Um, or in all these occasions, uh, the monks give at least a short uh, Dhamma talks. And so the Dhamma talks can be uh, like 10 to 20 minutes or five minutes. 
uh, or 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, uh, depends on. Uh, and there are some very popular monks who, who can really attract many hundreds and thousands of people. And some other monks are also, normally almost every monk, they can give a Dhamma talk uh, pretty easily. Even from the very young age, they are trained to do so. So this is the thing about uh, the dana, and uh, also and the, the dana about the dhamma talks, uh, and also these dhamma talks are very important to clear people's doubts and to also strengthen themselves of their own uh, perspective on Buddhism. Uh, so it's really really very important and some some dhamma talks are meant for old old people elderly people and some are, are for young children and some other dhamma talks can be based on um, middle aged people so they are aiming at middle aged people so different ways and different kinds of Dhamma talks are happening and there are some very famous monks and also like if the, for example today we do have uh, monks traveling internationally and then when they go to different countries for Dhamma missions uh, maybe some of their Dhamma talks can be interpreted or translated or paraphrased into local languages by some other people uh, depending on the uh, the visiting monks' popularity, uh, so a lot of people gather, and uh, depending on such monks' uh, important dhamma talks, there will also be uh, translators who translate the entire uh, dhamma talk. So, uh, in contemporary world today, we also have technology being used to a greater extent like the uh, the, the social media people uh, some monks also when they give dhamma talks uh, they are being uh, broadcasted through live facebook youtube live and also through websites and many many ways even through um, radio and for example, in Sri Lanka, we do have 24 seven around the clock, um, working, running Dhamma talks in certain Dhamma channels. Uh, they are both uh, radio channels and television channels, completely dedicated to the, the Buddha Dhamma. There are other countries also offering and maintaining such channels, even in even in the U.S., there are some Buddhist temples uh, who run uh, television stations. I have seen some Vietnamese uh, temples, very powerful community and very powerful temple. They do conduct, uh, they do maintain a uh, TV channel and they also share a lot of Dhamma services through that. So, Social media and other technology are being used to deliver Dhamma talks. Plus, uh, we also have Uber Conference. For example, I give a Dhamma talk every month to all the bhikkhunis in uh, America and Europe. So I just um, use uh, Uber, Uber Conference channel. Uh, that is only voice uh, is available there. And then some Dhamma talks are recorded and uh, also shared in, in uh, websites and other social media platforms. So many, many ways and print, printing media also have done a lot of contribution to Dhamma talks. So these are the ways that uh, the Dhamma talks are being held. And at the end of all those Dhamma talks, transferring merits to the heavenly beings, departed ones, and all sentient beings happen. I will share with you 
some of those things and some of those uh, things in detail today. <clears throat> For example, at the beginning of the Dhamma talks, the monk would administer the five precepts and prior to observe uh, five precepts, the monks will uh, ask the people, devotees, to pay salute to the Buddha, like Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa Mostly in Theravada Buddhist countries, these things are done in Pali. But in other traditional Buddhist countries, like Mahayana Buddhist countries, they have their own uh, languages, local languages, and maybe Chinese or Sanskrit or something. And in Vajrayana countries, they also have their own ways um, of, of medium, different mediums they use. But in almost all the Theravada Buddhist countries like Sri Lanka, Thailand, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, and then uh, some part of Vietnam and uh, some part of India and some part of Taiwan and some part of Malaysia, Singapore. And in all these countries, they also have uh, Theravada Buddhist traditions. And then they use these um, Vandana, the same formula to pay respect to the Buddha in Pali. And this is how they take uh, three refuges uh, immediately after salutation to the Buddha Dhamma. Buddha. Buddha Saranam Gachami Dhamma Saranam Gachami Sanghang saranam gachami Duteang pe buddhang saranam gachami Duteang pe dhammang saranam gachami Duteang pe sanghang saranam gachami Tateyang pe buddhang saranang gachami. Tateyang pe dhammang saranang gachami. Tateyang pe sanghang saranang gachami. So this is the three refuge and you can also notice here for example, in the previous one, we had Namo Tassa Bhagavato Varato, Samma Sambuddhas, and that is said three times. Homage to him, the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one, that is the meaning. But the Pali sense, they say three times. And here again, you can say Buddha Dhamma Sangha three times. And then Dutiyampi for the second time. Tatiyampi for the third time. So again, it is repeated in uh, three, three modes. So this three, uh, the number three is very unique to Buddhism. So we call it Buddha Dhamma Sangha, the triple gem. And then for the second time, for the third time, also go to the Buddha. Dhamma Sangha as my refuge. So this is uh, the part of three refuge. And then we have Panchasila, the five precepts, very famous precepts. All the Buddhist people, they have to observe these five precepts. Panatipata veramani sikhapadang samadhyami Adinna dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami 
காமேசு மிச்சாச்சாராவேரமணி சிக்காபதம் சமாதியாமி முசாதாவேரமணி சிக்காபதம் சமாதியாமி சுராமீதய மத்தியமாதட்டான வீரமணி சிக்காபதம் சமாதியாமி ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் த ஃபைவ் ஹிசெப்ட்ஸ் தட் பீப்பிள் அண்ட் டேக் தே ஒப்சர்வ் அட் த பிகினிங் ஆஃப் த தம்ம சர்மன் அண்ட் தென் த மங்ஸ் வில் இன்வைட் த ஹெவன்லி பீன்ஸ் டு அட்டெண்ட் த இவெண்ட் சமக்கிரவாலேசு அச்சு தேவதாஜனு சமுக்கத So, this is how they normally do. May the deities from various universes assemble here and listen to the noble teaching of the Supreme Sage or the Buddha that gives heavenly bliss and liberation from suffering. O oh, noble ones, this is the time to listen to the Dhamma, the Buddha's teaching. So again, so, uh, three times. This is inviting the heavenly beings. And then benefits of, um, like they also start with uh, a quotation from the, from the canonical literature or any other, like for, for example, Dhammapada or any Sutta, they can quote anything and then they will Uh, start the dhamma talk at the beginning they will give benefits of uh, dhamma talk for example when somebody listen to dhamma talk these are the five famous benefits that one can gain when they listen to dhamma talk one asutam sunati so hear the unheard because you have so many things in your family life or your reg- secular lifestyle you are not able to learn the dhamma uh, properly so what they do is they listen to the dhamma talks by those erudite uh, scholarly monks uh, who are familiar with those teachings and that is called asutang sunati so you can hear many things that you haven't heard before unprecedented uh, wisdom and knowledge will be gained through uh, this uh, by listening to dhamma talk sutam pariyo the peti sometimes when you listen again you you might listen again and confirm what uh, was heard before that is what happened to you when you listen to a dhamma talk regularly so you might have heard it before and that uh, knowledge will be confirmed consolidated further consolidated Uh, when you listen to the dhamma kang kang vitarati means doubts will be cleared about the dhamma ditting ujung karoti means straighten in the view your perspective of life perspective of dhamma how you interpret things how you analyze things will be uh, will be more straightened and widened because of uh, your Uh, perspective your vision and view chitta masa pasidati means when you know the dhamma when you listen to the dhamma you become very happy you learn the dhamma okay i learned today something very useful for my life something like that so chitta masa pasidati that person becomes very happy and joyful these are the benefits of dhamma listening to dhamma talk apart from so many other benefits when the dhamma talk is done at the end of it the monks also will transfer merits to all the heavenly beings and all the departed ones and all the sentient beings uh, they also do a blessing at the end uh, for example uh, if somebody 
uh, notice that their parent or whosoever passed away. So the monks will allow them to lead them or guide them to do the transferring of merits with pouring water uh, onto the bowl, as I have mentioned uh, in, a, in a lesson before, sometime back. So when we give trans and we, we transfer merits, this is the Pali uh, stanza that we use. Akasatha cha bhungmatha devanaga mahibhika punyang thang anumodetva chirang rakhantu loka sasanam akasatha cha bhungmatha devanaga mahibhika punyang thang anumodetva you can see here also three times and may all beings inhabiting space and earth Devas and Nagas of mighty power share this merit and may they long protect the dispensation. And then again they say, may they, may they long protect the teaching of the Buddha. That is the Dhamma. May they long protect myself and others. Mang Parang. Mang means me and Parang means others. So may they long protect. So these are the wonderful gestures and blessings and prayers that they do when they give Dhamma talks. Okay, that is the tra traditional setting of the Dhamma. And transferring marriage to the departed ones, idam me nyati nang hotu sukhita huntu nyatayo Again, three times. May this merit be shared with my relatives May those relatives be well and happy. So this is a traditional a Theravada way of transferring merits. And um, I also found an article on Buddhist preaching in contemporary Theravada Sri Lanka and lessons for the church. It's an interesting article. I have shared this one in the Google Drive for you. So please take a look. And that uh, will also be very useful. Um, so here in uh, the introduction and uh, how the monks are doing all these things, preaching in Buddhism and the purpose and the invitation, a sacred space and posture of the listener, style and delivery of the sermon and utilizing technology as I mentioned before. All these things are beautifully explained here and then compare with the Christian preaching and conclusion. So it's a kind of um, helping guidelines to those um, Christian churches, how these Theravada monks uh, do um, practice and do preach the Dhamma. And there are some monks in the Theravada world, they call Pariyati and Patipati. So Pariyati is the learning learning uh, section. Patipati is the practicing section. So if one is into Pariyati, he or she, he or she can um, she, uh, learn the Dhamma. For example, if a monk or a nun learns the Dhamma, uh, that is called Pariyati. So he or she can learn the Dhamma in many different ways like monastic schools or um, higher institute uh, uh, for Buddhism and all universities, colleges and um, most of the monks are very scholarly. They, they, they go to universities, they actually learn a lot of things and then uh, somehow even uh, going for master degrees, graduate studies and then 
even for PhDs and some are teaching uh, in the schools and also in every Sunday they also teach in the Sunday school and uh, this, these things happen in the traditional setup. And uh, utilizing technology, as I mentioned, and then it's very useful how the Christian church can use some of those techniques, how these eloquent monks skillfully uh, delivering their message to the, for the benefit of the, the many. Okay. So I also noticed uh, in another article by some Christian uh, churches. So expository, textual, topical, and selection. Uh, this article uh, also I shared in the Google Drive for you to have a look. And very interesting uh, how the Western world, they use uh, these type of public speeches. So uh, this is really important. Uh, like when the monks do that, they, they are naturally training themselves to be public speakers. And that uh, public speaking is different style, the tone, the intonation, and uh, also the, the voice, your confidence, your knowledge, and the subject matter, they are very different. For example, in today, sometimes even the monks can use PowerPoints to give Dhamma talks, and sometimes they can use other social media platforms like YouTube and for Facebook Live to give Dhamma talks, or other, other modes like uh, Uber, Uber Conference or whatever. Um, then there are so many other ways also. So many uh, platforms are there to share and give Dhamma talks. And uh, same thing in the Western world, they also give Dhamma talks in like sermons in their own churches, Christian church, when they give Dhamma talks or when they give uh, those sermons at the church, they also have to be prepared uh, differently. And it's not like a regular uh, public speech. It is a very important thing that they are are knowledgeable and they use those Dhamma talks for the benefit uh, of the audience and their message is delivered uh, in that particular field. Depending on the situation, let's say like if it's a, a wedding ceremony or if it's a funeral ceremony or if it's a housewarming ceremony, or opening a business or offering a dana or offering cut in a robe, depending on that situation, uh, the monks will give different styles of Dhamma talks. And uh, if it's a meditation session, so the Dhamma talk will be given according to that subject matter. So different monks are differently qualified to give different types of and Dhamma talks. And in the Christian church, they also give their sermons to benefit their audience. That's also very, very important. And here's the final day we have. Like, uh, it's a reminder for you, final day is September 14. And again, with the Zoom link, that I have uh, provided already in the Google Drive. So in this uh, grading, we have final term paper as 30% and final presentation as 10%. Uh, and midterm presentation as 30%. And there are some other components also. Okay, let me show you how we uh, go to the Google Drive. All right, this is the study material, BMN 603 study material. And this is the final review. And you can see here, you can see here the, the Zoom link for you to join our um, meeting.
and also the the date and the timing uh, they are given here and the final presentation you have a schedule here those students who uh, actually registered for the first um, presentation I just have their names and uh, if there are some people some more people missing just let me know and then we also have this one this is the uh, cheat sheet that you have to complete okay uh, assignment type and then week one two three four five six seven eight nine ten what did you do you can mention here so you you can type all these things and send it to me okay at the end of the course when you do that you know you are well on your course and then this is the syllabus and this is our upcoming weeks and then this is the spiritual journal that you have to mention and maintain um, yeah this is this is it okay so now you know about the finals final presentation will be based on your spiritual journal we will meet uh, every Saturday at uh, 7 a.m. I'm also planning to do it a little early from next week, like 6 a.m. through the My USA YouTube channel uh, with a guided meditation for beginners. Make sure you are ready to meditate with me and I, ex I expect you to send at least one sentence of reflection at the comment section after the meditation. So if you wake up early, that will be way more better for you. And just in case you can meditate that early, you, you can't wake up that early. You can still watch the videos and do those activities. So spiritual journal is very important. And please record your daily spiritual journal. At after meditation you can also give feedback about your own meditation how we how did it go and any questions or whatever you need so you just um, ask a question if you have any all these things you can record so start practicing at least 10 minutes a day that's how we did at the beginning of the course and then every week you started increasing your duration Hopefully by the end of the, uh, the semester, you will be able to meditate at least 20-30 minutes uh, continuously. And in the final presentation, you are supposed to present yourself complete progress report along with your demonstration. Final presentation will consist of 5 minutes progress report and 5 minute guided meditation demonstration. So these two components are there for every student. So keep doing it, okay? And let me know if you need any help and for this uh, report. And the assignment for the week, continuous spiritual journal and one page reflection on today's lesson. It is due on Friday, August 28, 11 p.m. That's it for today and see you again next week with another lesson and you can let me know if you have any question with these and thank you so much have a wonderful wonderful day and week ahead to all of you thank you